The video I'm presenting today will be aimed at the small time telephone collector who would like to make some of their vintage telephones work. There are many different systems on the market that will operate with single line telephones or specialty multi-line proprietary phones for that system. This particular unit is a Panasonic 308 system. They made a 616 system as well as an 824 and so on. The 308 and the 616 are both the same exact identical package. The only difference is the particular unit we have here in the video, three telephone lines that are the jacks up on the upper left, and then eight extension, or better known as station jacks. A 616 would have 16 jacks across the top, and then below them would be the six telephone lines, referred to as central office lines. The cabinets are the same exact size, almost the same weight, and they operate the same. It's just twice the capacity. The particular unit I have was one that was uh, from an estate sale of an interconnect company, and uh, this was the easiest one for me to get to out of the stack. The unit here has got some unique features. The in this case, the eight jacks that's on the top, uh, which excluding the three that's on the very left side, can operate a multi-button proprietary telephone or a standard single line type telephone. I have a multi-button phone plugged into jack number one, and then I have a single line phone plugged into jack number three. The extension numbers are uh, 11 uh, and then all the way up to, in this case, 18. This has uh, PBX features built into it, so if you're using a single line phone, you can dial the trunk access code 9 and that'll access any of the available three outgoing lines. Uh, that can be restricted through programming. If you dial Trunk code 81, you will land on line one. Trunk code 82, line two, and then of course, trunk code 83 would be line three. If you had the six line version, then uh, trunk code 86 would land you on line number six. To call the attendant, you just simply dial 11. If through software you programmed it, you should be able to set extension 11 to also be zero for the operator. The KSU in the default mode does not need programming. If you don't have a proprietary telephone set, which there are many different sets that will work on this KSU, it'll work fine for, in this case, eight single line phones or 16 if you have the larger unit. This will uh, allow rotary dial telephones and touchstone telephones. If you're using a rotary dial phone and you dial 9 or the trunk code 81 through 86, the PBX will take the rotary and turn it into DTMF and send it to the telco line as a tone instead of a rotary dial. You can call between the stations by dialing the extension numbers of whatever the jack is, and it'll ring a standard 500 slash 2500, or you can have a proprietary phone. When I was selling and installing these systems, it was not uncommon to have a fax machine set up on <clears throat> a jack, and you can program that jack for what is called pickup dial. So when you go off hook, and wait three seconds, it dials nine for you automatically or whatever the trunk code you chose to put in. So you don't need to dial an access code on a fax if you didn't want to. The internal dial tone is 400 hertz, 
um, which is different than the CO line. In this case, I have only one line connected due to the building I'm in. It doesn't have much phone service in it compared to the other buildings I've got. So I will show a proprietary telephone and then a single line phone. I have a uh, base 500 set with an ash handset. This is just a bunch of parts I grabbed to uh, produce the video. That is a standard rotary dial telephone set. Most any rotary phone will work fine, and most any touchstone phones will work fine. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm using rotary as a demonstration, so I would dial extension 11, and that's ringing the intercom on the black phone. I can dial 9, and that gives me the outside line. In this case, jack number one, which is the top left jack of the control unit. These systems are really great. The only disadvantage is there's a memory battery that, uh, because these things are 25 years old or more, the memory battery will be shot and needs to be replaced. But they are available and they're not very expensive. To program this system, you must have a proprietary Panasonic phone. There's a whole bunch of series of Panasonic phones that'll work fine on this system, uh, far more than I'll ever even begin to try to tell you about. The phone jacks, where the phones plug into it, you need to be cautious about the wiring. There's six pin jacks, because depending on the type of a proprietary telephone that you plug into it, you can use four or six wires. Um, for single line phones, you only need two wires. However, you do not want to put phones on this system that has what's called A and A1 because you will short out the di digital bus. You also don't want to put on it Prince's phones unless you're using two conductor modular cords uh, because the jacks have all six pins live but not necessarily always used. These control units, referred to as KSU, Key Service Unit, must be wall mounted for ventilation. Do not lay them on a workbench forever and ever. For a quick little test, you're doing fine as long as you have the cover open so that the electronics can breathe and you're not in an incredibly hot environment. Do not put this in an enclosed cabinet to where it'll get super hot. Uh, the system is also not intended to be turned off and on. And you will kill the system if you turn it off and on repetitively. The amount of power consumption this uses is insignificant in the overall picture of things. And I tell people, if the power bill is a concern for running this unit, then you need to just not have the unit. It is not a big deal. Anyway, I hope this video provided some basic information. There's lots of other videos on YouTube and information on the web on the Panasonic products. I was not trying to cover the entire range of Panasonic products because they are into the massive quantities. Some of the systems require certification, um, which of course Panasonic has discontinued all phone systems. They're no longer going to be making business phone systems, so it doesn't matter. However, when you get into the larger, far more complex systems, then you can use a computer to program it. And you need to have uh, some background on how telephones work and, and how to set these up. There's a fantastic amount of information in the world on these systems. And of all of the phone systems that I have seen or worked on, this is the best for a home use environment. Now, of course, there's people out there who have much larger systems and larger collections, and that is fine. 
If you want to put the effort into the bigger systems and learning how they work, great. There's a lot of information on that, but I am not trying to provide information for that scope of a project. Uh, if you would, please like and subscribe. And I do have a Patreon account if you feel this was a, something that you want to support uh, going forward. Thanks and have a great day. The black phone is a proprietary set, KXT7030. This was the particular phone of choice at the time for this particular key system. Uh, this one has a display in it, which you see the LCD display flashing because I have not done any programming on the system. And they had a phone that was identical to this without the display called a 7050. I sold a lot of these and they were a very good workhorse of a phone system. So I would go off hook on this phone on the intercom and I would dial the extension of the rotary phone. The tone that you heard, uh, the dial tone, intercom dial tone is 400 hertz. I'll go off hook and I'll dial nine. And we have dial tone from my step-by-step -step system. And I could dial on a different numbers within that system. Or you can press the line key directly and be on the same thing as you would get if you dialed nine. 9 is a pool code, so if line 1 would have been in use by someone else, they would have chose line 2. If that was in use, it would choose line 3. Of course, that can be controlled through programming. And the programming book is a KXT-308 or 616. Uh, it's about an 80 to 90 page book. It is available if you do a Google search through various uh, sites. Again, the display on it is flashing because I have not set the date and the time, and that is not part of the scope of this video. I will show the single line phone and then some hardware that can be used uh, to convert the modular telephone jacks to make the... Uh, stuff into house wiring or display wiring. The telephone cords that I have that is not the factory cord plugged into the black phone are custom made to reverse the polarity so that a Western Electric uh, touchstone phone without a polarity guard will operate correctly. Most of the other phones will work just fine. Rotary don't care either way. There is a 66 block, which is what this is, and it has um, network jacks on the left side that are brought out to punch down terminal blocks, 66 type uh, block terminals. So the jack is a four pair jack, AKA eight wires. And of course all eight wires do come out. There are massive amounts of different configurations of modular to 66 or 110 type devices in the world that you can find on eBay. I will not go into great detail on this other than if you're connecting a system up and you have phones that are longer than cords that you want to plug directly into the control unit, no problem. You buy something similar to this and then put modular cords between the jacks and that jack and then it makes it where you can access the two or four pins uh, depending on what you're trying to do. In this case I've got jack number 13 plugged into port number one because you can have them in any order you want. There's no big deal. Another thing you can use is if you choose to is a, a telephone jack. There's about 10,000 different configurations of these so you can plug the cord into that and then on the screw terminals, hook up wires going to another jack and then plug the phone in to the other jack. So that is always a possibility as well. 
uh, the, the configurations are limitless. Uh, I always recommend buying, you know, two foot or three foot, four foot cords, depending on what you're trying to do, and try to keep your modular cords short so you don't end up with a rat's nest.